Good morning. It's 1030, so let's get started. Thank you for joining us today for the webinar, Protecting Our Water Resources and Providing Water for People. I'm Teresa Monson with the St. John's River Water Management District, and I'm serving as moderator for today's webinar. Our presenter is Dr. Jennifer Mitchell, who's responsible for educational outreach for the district. Dr. Mitchell holds a doctorate in forest ecology from Auburn University, and she's been with the district for three years. This is the first in a webinar series the district is hosting to educate the public about the work we do and how individuals can help protect our water res resources. Our next webinar will be May 7th at 1030 a.m. That registration link is available on the district's website at sjrwmd.com. We hope you will join us for them. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be made available on the district's website. We are all working in very unprecedented times. So during the presentation and comments, you may hear background, background noises such as pets or children. Thank you for your understanding and patience in advance. Uh, we would like to remind everyone that they will be on mute throughout the presentation. Feel free to type questions in the question box during the presentation. We will respond to as many as possible during the question and answer session at the end of Dr. Mitchell's presentation. If we don't get to your question during the meeting, we will reach out to you afterward and get you an answer. Now, please join me in welcoming Dr. Mitchell. Thank you, Teresa, for that wonderful introduction. I am thankful that everyone joined us today and appreciate your time. I have a few polls throughout the presentation and hope everyone will participate. We'll start with our first poll, and it is to get an idea of how familiar everyone that is participating is with the St. John's River Water Management District. So do you work with us frequently? Do you enjoy getting outside on district properties? Do you uh, see the name on your property tax bill or you're not, but you're not really sure what we do? Or you get the water news or follow us on social media. And if you don't get water news or follow us on social media, I encourage you to uh, check out the link for that on our website? Or did you happen to stumble in and uh, now you're excited to learn about our water resources and how we can help to protect them? So I'll wait just a moment and let a few more folks vote. I do encourage you to, to voice your uh, opinion or your, your response throughout all of these polls. I have about four of them throughout the presentation. So let's see what folks think or who all we have with us today. So we have a full, uh, about half of the folks that work with us frequently, a few that enjoy getting outside on district property, and some that get water news. So I'm sure that's how you heard about the presentation today. So that's a wonderful understanding of uh, who we have uh, here today. I s so, uh, Let's go on and start about how the St. John's River Water Management District is working to protect our water resources and provide water for people. So for those of you who are unaware of, of what area the district covers, although you may work with us frequently, we cover all or portions of 18 counties in Northeast and down into Central Florida. We cover the entire watershed of the St. John's River. So anywhere that it rains within our district, that water will make its way into the St. John's River as well as some of our coastal rivers and into the St. Mary in the northern part of our district. The, Saint, the water management districts were created in 1970s to ensure the availability of water for us now into the future and for our natural systems because all of our water in Florida are interconnected. And so it is important that these agencies are at work to ensure water supply now and into the future and considering our natural systems. Some of you may be thinking, well, we're in a state where we have an abundant amount of water. We get over 54 inches of rain on average. We have oceans on three sides of us, over 7,700 lakes, 11 million acres of wetlands. Why is water supply or water management even a concern? And that is because not all of our water is readily available. Uh, and so we're able to understand that there is a, a need to manage that water. 
And so we do that through our four core missions, our water supply, water quality, flood protection, and natural systems. And I'll talk about each one of these core missions throughout my presentation. And again, it is intended that our agency is managing the water for us, the people of our district, the businesses, as well as our natural systems. And so it's a careful balancing act to make sure that there is enough water for everyone at all times of, of the year. So next I have another poll of where is the water that your house, in your house is coming from? Is it coming from a lake, river, or the aquifer, or the ocean? And there isn't a single answer for everyone. Depending on where you are, this answer may be different, but we will have a, but we will have a, a specific place that that water is coming from for most of the, the residents in our district. So I'll let a few more folks vote. So let's see what everyone thinks is where our water comes from or the water in your house is coming from. So the majority of the water in the St. Johns River that is used in our homes comes from the Florida aquifer. This aquifer is a tremendous resource that supplies the water and is the lifeblood to our rivers, lakes, and springs, and is the water that supplies our homes with water. So a lot of us may not think about the aquifer as a resource um, and it is beneath our feet so we don't often get to see that aquifer so let's take a deeper dive down into the aquifer and get a better understanding of what it is and why it's an important resource to manage so i often think about explaining the aquifer as a layer cake so on the top we have our decorations or our plants and our lakes and the surface sands you can think about as icing and those icings cover over our surficial aquifer in some areas or that first layer. And in those areas where you get that surficial aquifer system, you're going to have areas similar to that middle layer of icing that are going to prevent water from moving rapidly through them. Those are typically clays or other tight bound uh, substances in our aquifer rocks. Uh, and so that's gonna create a perched water table. This is gonna be the area that we get more of our lakes and our wetlands. And this is of course a very simplified version of what is occurring in the aquifer, but um, it is helpful to understand the geology of our state and the Florida aquifer in general changes as you move north to south and east to west, but it is good to just get a, a general understanding of what's going on beneath our feet. And then of course, there's the Florida aquifer made of that limestone underneath our feet, underneath the aquifer. And limestone is a porous rock that allows water to move through it. And that's one of the reasons that our aquifer is such a tremendous resource that that water is able to be stored in the aquifer and then moves freely through the aquifer. So how does water get down into the Florida aquifer? Well, there are areas of recharge that when it rains, there are none of those uh, impervious surfaces or um, the, the, the clays underneath. And so that water moves rapidly down into the Florida aquifer system. And that water in our aquifer is in constant motion. It moves down in our recharge and discharges up through our springs and uh, out and towards our oceans occasionally. What type of water you may be thinking is in our aquifer? That's going to be fresh water on top and salt water down beneath. The salt water is deeper in our aquifer system because that uh, salt water is heavier and more dense than the fresh water. And then the final piece of our water system here in Florida, our water cycle and the way that water is interconnected is us, of course, and the way that we are influencing how water moves, how water uh, is utilized, and we can even think about the fact that we increase runoff because of our uh, development, our roads, and our buildings. So this is an important consideration when we're thinking about where water is in the water cycles of Florida. So now that we have a better understanding of the water cycle here in Florida, 
let's move on and talk about our core missions at the St. John's River Water Management District. The first one are our natural systems. And so the district owns and manages over 700,000 acres of property. And these important natural systems are managed with everything from prescribed burns, like you can see in the bottom picture, trying to control invasive species, like in the top picture, because again, there are everything wanting to live in Florida. So managing invasive species is a very important role of our land management folks. And these natural properties are available for public recreation. I think they're one of the best ways for you to get your tax dollars, um, to, to be able to enjoy your tax dollars hard at work. You can go out to our district properties and hike, bike, boat. Uh, some of them allow uh, uh, camping, of course, during non-COVID-19 times. So you wanna make sure you check our website to see what you're able to do on those properties and which ones are open at any time. Our district properties are so valuable because they allow us to accomplish all of our missions at the same time. Since most of our properties are in wetlands, wetlands act as the kidneys to our ecosystem. So protecting these wetlands in natural systems allows for those wetlands to act as the kidneys to our ecosystem, cleaning water as it flows through those wetlands. Wetlands also do a tremendous job of allowing for flood protection, both by the district owning those properties and preventing construction in them or people to move into those low-lying areas that are flood prone, as well as wetlands allow water to slowly release from them into our water bodies so that there isn't a, a, a rapid change in water levels. And then some of our district properties that we own are in those important recharge areas. And so that's gonna be important for water supply. And then of course, our, natural pro our district properties are natural areas. This is a map of where all of those district properties are. I hope that now that you know about them, that you might get out and enjoy them. I do have another polling question to find out which district land, if you have visited it, is one of your favorites. So these are our, our top four properties uh, in terms of recreation. And um, do you enjoy going out to Jillington, Durban, North, the Lake, North, Lake Apopka North Shore, Blue Cypress Conservation Area, or Hal Scott Regional Preserve. These are just a few of the numerous sites that we have, or now that you know about them, are you looking forward to exploring district properties? I hope that if you do go out and enjoy them, that you do remember to keep in mind uh, appropriate social distancing and um, keep that six feet between you and other people that are out recreating. So let's see what everybody said. So it looks like, that's interesting, that a lot of folks didn't know about district properties and are now looking forward to going out and exploring them. And they, again, are, do occur across the entire district. So let's move on to our next core mission, and that is water supply, that water that we use in our homes and businesses. It is the district's mission to ensure that we have enough water for us now and into the future and for all of the water users. So thinking of our municipal utilities, agriculture, industry, and our natural system. So we want to make sure through our scientific methods that we are uh, uh, allowing a water available into the future. And the way that we do that is through our regional water supply plans. This is where we take a look at what is the available water currently, what are the projected demands, and what is the projected growth. We know that population has been increasing in our district uh, so we want to know how much water is each person using, how is that amount changing, as well as um, how much water is going to be needed into the future, and where is that water going to come from. So all of this is synthesized and put into a plan, and we have three different planning regions in our district. We have the North Florida Regional Water Supply Partnership, we have the Central Springs East Coast Region, and we have the Central Florida Water Initiative. And right now, the Central Florida Water Initiative has released its draft plan, and there is a webinar this evening about that plan. And so I encourage you to uh, participate in that or sign up for it if you're interested in finding out more about the water supply plan. 
in that area. So let's see, where is everyone from? Do we have a lot of North Florida region, Central Springs East Coast region, or more folks from the Central Florida Water Initiative area? Great, it looks like we have a whole lot of folks from North Florida and Central Florida. So those, those are plans again that are reassessed every 20 years and they're looking out, uh, or every five years and they are uh, looking out for the 20 year time period. So ultimately we did mention that we have a lot of available water, or a lot of water available in Florida, but it's not always easily available. And ultimately it's a matter of how much that water is going to cost to have it treated and in, in, into our homes. We use the Floridan Aquaphor because it is currently the cheapest source of very clean water. So it's about a dollar to a dollar fifty per thousand gallons. As we start having to go to alternative sources, so reclaimed water, so that treated wastewater that is an absolutely fabulous um, alternative source of water, especially for irrigation uh, of our yards and golf courses. And so that is about a dollar fifty per thousand gallons. As we start having to go to alternative sources, deeper wells, surface water, there's more that needs to be removed. So the cost of treating that goes up and desalination would be six to eight and a half times what we're currently paying. So that is a good reminder that conservation is the best way to have available water into the future. And so we want to target frequently uh, the irrigation and that outdoor water use because outdoor water use utilizes 50% of the water that's used in our um, in our district or in our in our, our water use at home. So that's a really easy area for you to be able to uh, have a water conservation impact. And so the district is running a, a campaign called Water Less. Right now we're just ending the did you set it and forget it phase and moving in to watch the weather wait to water. Hopefully everyone is seeing this information and able to adapt that messaging into your own irrigation. Hopefully everyone realizes how important that water conservation is. So water quality is another important aspect of what we do at the district. We want to ensure that the projects that we're doing are addressing areas in need of improvement of that water quality and that those projects are having a, an impact on it. So we have an extensive network of sampling locations that are in our springs, our rivers, even in the groundwater. That's a picture of a groundwater well in the bottom corner. And all of that data is available on our website. So if you're interested in that data, I encourage you to, to get online and check it out. Nutrients are one of the biggest ways that water quality is being impacted. Those nutrients cause algal blooms. And so the district is working uh, to reduce that nutrient loading. And two of the, the ways that we're working to do that are through our regional agricultural stormwater treatment facilities. This is going to take water coming from agricultural areas, allow uh, wetlands to be created. Again, wetlands do a great job of improving water quality. And then that water is able to slowly go out into our uh, rivers, as well as we're helping to divert treated wastewater from our surface waters. So those are two examples. And again, that would also be a beneficial use, beneficial reuse. The final core mission is our flood protection. The district is responsible for 100 major and minor flood control structures through the Ocklawaha Basin and the lower, the upper St. John's. And uh, so that's one of the ways that we're able to, to allow flood control. And Ultimately, at the district, if we're working to ensure water quality and water availability for us now and into the future, some of the tools that we utilize are the permits that we are responsible for. We have two main permits that we are responsible for. Those are our environmental resource permits, and this is going to address development or new construction activities, looking at stormwater that may be created by paving and building, uh, making sure that there's no off-site flooding, and that the water that's generated is able to be stored and slowly released, again, helping with that water quality improvements as well, or water quality impacts. We also are responsible for 
are consumptive use permits. So those large water users like municipalities, uh, golf courses, and agriculture come to us for a permit, and we want to make sure that um, that that they're using the most appropriate water possible, and that they have a conservation effort in mind as well. And so finally. One of the ways that we're leveraging the partnerships that we have in utilities, local governments, and agriculture, and other interested entities that want to protect water quality, uh, protect flood protection, uh, decrease water use, and protect those natural systems is through our cost share projects. Prior to, uh, from now, or from this year, since 2013, the district has awarded more than $129 million four projects that address water quality, water conservation, natural systems, and flood control. Some examples are helping utilities to get additional uh, reclaimed water, helping agriculture be more water efficient, as well as helping convert homes from septics to sewers, and helping to build stormwater infrastructure in areas that don't have it. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of what we do at the district, if you are a parent or a grandparent that has kids at home and you're looking for ways to teach them more about our water resources, I encourage you to check out our education page. There's a tremendous vast uh, value of the resources there. And I look forward to taking any questions that you may have now. So please answer, ask, ask those in your uh, question box. Yes, thanks um, very much, Dr. Mitchell. Let's get to the questions. Uh, we do have a couple. Uh, we do have a couple of wonderful compliments for your presentation also, but send your questions out in that question box. Um, one of the things you mentioned was our district lands. Now, uh, the question is, is going out on the river considered going out on district land? Actually, no. There are some areas in which you're able to utilize a boat ramp to access the river, but the river is a is a, a resource for us all. It is considered a, a water of Florida, and so it is not owned by the district. Okay, our next question is about homeowners associations. Uh, you talked about uh, water on landscapes. Uh, what are you doing to get the message out to homeowners associations to address landscape concerns? That's a great question. So. And it's frequently one that I would get when I was going out and speaking to audiences in person of um, people having the desire to, to change their landscapes or change how they're uh, managing those landscapes. And so as, the, as a result of that, we have created an opportunity for the community association managers and uh, creating continuing education units for them to learn more about stormwater about um, irrigation and helping to decrease the need for that in those, especially those common areas and about those natural areas. And so through creating this relationship with those community association managers, I'm hoping that we're able to uh, educate them and they'll take that information back to their HOA boards and, um, and be able to utilize that as well. Okay, we have a question. Uh, what methods of flood control are used? So I am not an expert in flood control, but I know that there is a, a valuable uh, page on our website. And, uh, and so I'm gonna direct you to that. Unless Teresa, you know better methods of flood control I, I, would, um, I, I would direct you to our website, or I'm happy to, to get you those flood control answers directly to you, to the, to the asker of that question. Absolutely. Um, the next question is, do you use meters and read them to measure water use by agriculture? So all of the agricultural, meet, agricultural wells, um, if they are on a permit, would have a meter. It is a self-reported uh, to the district as for, far as that usage. So they are, the, the farmers of the agriculture would report that to us. 
Uh, the next question is, does the district enforce residential water conservation or is it strictly education? So the district itself will send out uh, letters informing people about those uh, ordinances and we rely on the local go governments and their enforcement uh, to be able to, in, in partnerships with our local governments and their enforcement offices to uh, enforce those restrictions. Now here's a great question. Is there a map of all the district's lands that are accessible to the public? Not that I am aware of. There so, is on our website. There is? There is. I mean, if you go okay. to our recreation um, pages on our website, um, you can actually look at the entire district and uh, they have little dots on the map. And then also uh, you can look for detailed information about each one of those properties. Yes, our website is, is definite. The recreation section is the, the best place to go uh, again to find out what activities you're able to do uh, on each property and uh, find those trail maps and further information. Well, here's a big question. Um, what is the biggest challenge facing the district? I think that is one that, that may need a, a higher uh, person to answer it. Okay, well, we can certainly we can get, back, get back, to, back to, we can get back to that. Um, but I would say that, that one of the, the challenges is the public awareness and knowledge about our individual impacts and abilities to have influence on our water quality and water quantity and that interconnectedness between water quality and water quantity. We um, have a lot of people that live in Florida now that may not uh, originally be from Florida and so the water resources here in Florida do uh, behave differently and the natural systems are very different than they are in other areas. So I would say education is always a great place to, to start with that. Um, here's a question that says, I hear about how our aquifer is being depleted. Is there a timeline associated with that and how much of a concern is this? That is a, a very good question, and I, I would say it is one that I get frequently. As long as we continue getting our rainfall in uh, summer months and get in, getting that, that water rainfall over the, the duration of the year, again, there are large areas of our state that that water is making its way down into the aquifer. And so it's not an amount, a matter of the aquifer um, being depleted and staying decreased in the con content of the water that's in there, since it is getting recharged with each rain and each hurricane season. Uh, the next question is, where do I find out more information about the Water Less campaign? That is a great question and it is a very easy answer in that you can find more information on waterlessflorida.com. And so it gives you great tips about how to um, improve your irrigation efficiency. Again, this campaign is all targeted to outdoor water use. And there's some great yeah. videos that can help you uh, with your irrigation on that website. The next question asks, asks about the future. Will our future webinars discuss each core mission in more detail? That is one of the things that I am uh, intending for this webinar series. That as I was developing this presentation, I get so excited about each one of the core missions and about uh, different projects that we have in the district. My presentation when I started out would have, would have been about an hour and a half. Uh, and so I do intend to create a uh, a series on each of these core missions and potentially even digging down deeper into to particular areas of those. Well, we are right at 11 a.m. Uh, we do want to thank you for your participation. If we did not get to your question, we will reach out to you individually. Uh, thank you for all the comments and the questions as well.
Um, as I mentioned earlier, our next educational webinar will be May 7th, beginning at 10.30 a.m. That registration link is available on our website at www.sjrwmd.com. We hope you will join us then. Thank you again. Stay safe. Enjoy your day. Thank you all.